genetic disease that caused the muscles in his legs not to work. That's why his legs were amputated just below his pelvis. He was told he would never sit up by himself, that he would probably not be a functioning member of society. Many people would have thrown him in the town, but not Spencer West. He learned to sit up, he learned to walk on his hands. He went to school, faced your typical teenage issues like isolation, failure, and pride, also had to deal with bullying. But through it all, he appears to not have lost hope. He even became a cheerleader in high school, but after the university, Spencer hit a wall. He knew he wanted to make an impact, but he didn't know how. Then on a trip to Kenya with me to me, Spencer had an epiphany. He was different, but for a reason. And he returned from Kenya with his life's purpose to share his story and motivate and inspire others. We need to continue to build that community because we're not standing alone. As a motivational speaker, Spencer has shared the stage with the likes of Al Gore and the Dalai Lama. And now he's prepping for his greatest challenge yet. Redefine what's possible and prove that out of that that being disabled doesn't mean being unable. Obstacles can seem insurmountable when we're tackling them alone. But together, they turn into exciting challenges. deceiving you. This is a new ring. <laughs> and of course, I don't have any legs. I was born with legs, but I was born with a genetic disease that caused the muscles of my legs not to work. So the age of two, they removed at the knee in hopes that I could use artificial legs and get around that way. But unfortunately, that didn't work out. So then at the age of five, they removed just below my pelvis, which is basically what you see now. Now, after my surgeries, my family and I were told by the doctors that I would never sit up on myself, that I would never walk by myself, and that I probably wouldn't be a functioning member of society. But my family and I refused to believe that. So we started to prove to ourselves, but the rest of the world, that I can be just like everyone else. Now, I currently live in Toronto, where I work for this organization called Me, but I'm originally from the United States, and I had a normal childhood. I never thought it was different until I went out in public and then everybody else made me feel different. The first two questions I used to get, not only as a kid, but even today, before anybody even asks me my name, are where are your legs and how do you go to the bathroom? I mean, imagine coming to your first day of school, meeting somebody for the first time, shaking their hand and saying, oh, nice to meet you. How do you go to the bathroom? It's a little uncomfortable, right? What I began to realize is the people, they wouldn't see me as a person. So I had to start answering these questions whether I wanted to or not. So I would tell people how I lost my legs, and I'd go to the bathroom just like everyone else. Thank you for being so concerned. Now when it came time for school, more specifically in high school, in order to be considered a good student at my high school, you not only had to be good at academics, but you had to be a good athlete. So I felt a lot of pressure to play a sport. And I thought, okay, well, what sport should I play? And I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'll play football, but I thought we'd take the football and you turn it this way. We're about the same size. So that, that's probably not a good idea. I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'll play basketball. But a couple of years ago, I learned it was probably a good idea that I didn't play basketball. This is Shaquille O'Neal. He was a huge NBA star when I was in school. And although I didn't go to school with him, there was a lot of guys on our basketball team that were just as tall. I thought, well, if I play basketball, I'm going to be destroyed. So I did the next best thing. I became a cheerleader instead. Because I figured if it couldn't be on the court, I would do the next best thing and be on the sidelines. But one day while cheering at a basketball game, I heard a girl from the crowd say, what's Spencer doing out there? This isn't a disabled team. And I remember hearing that and thinking, what? You told me to play a sport, and now that I'm playing a sport, I'm not playing the right sport, and what, people with disabilities can't play sports? In that moment, I realized no matter what I did, it would never be good enough, and I had a choice to make. And I chose to stop caring about what other people thought. I did cheerleading for me, and it turns out not only did I enjoy it, but I was pretty good at it. Later that year, we went to the state cheerleading competition where we took first place as the number one squad out of the entire state. Now, I want to show you a quick clip of what a routine looked like, but let me just 